Today in class, we are learning how to make a print making of a bird. So, one of the important things to remember is that whatever you do on the styrofoam, which is this piece right here, you're each going to get one, is going to show on your print. So, we want to practice and do our pre-drawing before we even touch the styrofoam. The styrofoam is not going to be the first thing we draw on. The first thing we draw on is called print paper, and it's a thin paper that looks a little bit beige. We're going to draw our bird on that before we print. So I've already drawn my bird. Some students thought it looked more like a chicken, a baby chick, which is fine. Um, someone also said it looked like a pregnant bird, which is fine too. Um, and anyway, this is my bird, and I'm very proud of it, so it might not be perfect, but that is okay. And I drew it first, like this, normally how you would draw um, anything that you draw, you just draw it flat. And then what I did was I put my foam underneath it. And I lined it up to my foam, and then I poked holes. And can you tell me in what kind of practice do you poke holes to make a design that you've done before? Dylan. It's something that you do near Halloween. Good. You carve a pumpkin. So when you're carving a pumpkin, sometimes, not always, you do the design first in dots and then when you take off the paper you can see your dots and then you can carve it deeper and that's exactly what we're doing with our prints so first you're going to draw it then you're going to put it on top of your foam then you're going to put dots around the entire drawing then you're going to take off your paper and fill those dots with a line so you'll go around with your pencil, make it nice and deep, because if it's not deep enough, these white lines will not show. The reason these white lines show is because my pencil is carving into the foam, creating the lines. So I'm just gonna do that again, because sometimes paint, when you use it, it gets dried in there. So I'm just gonna make sure this is all open. I added a branch and a leaf for the bird to stand on so that it's not just floating. Someone asked if they could do their bird flying, and the answer is yes. If you'd rather have your bird flying, you have to show that its wings are open and it's moving. Questions are going to be saved till the end, so I will let you know as soon as I'm done with the video, I can answer any questions that you might have. After you've drawn on your styrofoam, and you're sure you've gone deep enough to the styrofoam, you could get your paper ready and also get your print, your ink ready. So I'm gonna show you first the ink, how to make the ink ready. The ink comes in a tube and then I will go ahead and put some ink in the middle and then you will use your roller to go side to side and then also you can switch and go up and down so the, the the sound that it makes is actually good that means it's ready so when you start to hear that clicking like I don't even know sticky yeah that sticky noise it sounds like it's being um, it sounds like pop rocks that's a good way to explain it that's a good sign that means your ink is ready to be rolled onto your print so i'm going to go ahead and move my ink just for the video purpose um, i'm going to put my paper right next to my print you guys can give yourself some space so that you don't get your paper dirty like i just did i'm going to make sure my print is on um, a protective piece of paper. So let me go ahead and do that right now. That way, you guys, I don't care if I get this cardboard dirty, but I do care if the tablecloths get dirty. They're there to protect the paper, but also we have to do 
I have kindergarten next and I have first and second grade and the ink takes a while to fully dry. It doesn't fully dry like in 10 minutes like paint does. It takes a quite, um, maybe even like a day to fully dry. So when you get on the table, it's going to be um, wet for the next class. That's why I ask that you protect the table. And I'm actually rolling on my piece. The entire piece is going to be covered. And if I don't have enough, I can go back to my ink. And do the same thing. I'm going to go side to side, up and down. This is putting more ink on my roller. Okay. And then you should only need to do that twice. You don't really need more than twice. If you notice that there's an area that's not covered and you want to do it three times, go ahead. But twice should be enough. And again, it's a messy project. You're gonna get paint on your hands. Just wash it as soon as you're done. Now, I'm gonna take my print with both hands and I'm gonna flip, I just wanna show you that I'm using both hands. I'm gonna flip it so that it's centered on my paper. Then I'm gonna lay it flat and once I lay it flat, I'm not gonna move it. So it's really important that it doesn't move once it's on the paper. And then with my hand, I'm actually just going to use my fist to just put some pressure all over. Some people would prefer to use a clean roller to roll on top. If you would like to do that, I'm 100% okay with that. Just know that we have limited rollers, so not everyone's gonna be able to get a clean roller at the same time. Now I'm going to keep my hand on this paper and pull up to see my creation. So it's like a stamp. It's upside down right now, but I'll flip it. And if you get fingerprints on the side, it's okay. Once you guys take these home at the end of the year, you can actually cut it out or frame it. You don't need to have the paper surrounding it. You can mat it. You can do whatever you'd like once you take it home. Um, but if you want to keep your styrofoam, please put your name on the back with a marker. So the reason we're doing that is because it's hard to know whose is whose. Even if you, you're the only one that did this type of bird, it's still going to be hard. So you need to keep your name on everything you turn in or else I won't be able to tell whose is whose. I'm also naming my print. If I were a real printmaker and I was you know, gonna create a hundred of these, I would put my name at the bottom corner and then let's say this is my first one. It's actually my second, so I'm gonna make it two. So I'm gonna put two and I made a hundred of them, I would put two out of a hundred. So when someone buys this, they know that this is the second print out of my 100 series print. That's what a printmaker does. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You just make sure at least you have your name. All right, so that's the process. At the end, you'll just put this in the drying rack and then when they dry, you guys will be able to take your foam home. So good luck and thank you.